What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John Plays here and today we're gonna be talking about Pokemon Sword and Shield starter Pokemon. This video is sponsored by me giving away a Nintendo Switch. More details at the end of the video. <laughs> Pokemon Sword and Shield is slated to come out this year, 2019, at an unreleased date at this time, and I'm very excited for it. And I now realize that I'm wearing all Zelda gear, because I'm recording this Sunday, which is the two-year anniversary of Switch and Breath of the Wild, and um, deal with it. We're talking about Pokemon. In particularly, I want to talk about these starters here, Grookey, Scorabunny, and Sobble. When these three were first revealed, the immediate reaction I saw all over my Twitter was people absolutely hating them because of their very, very simple, very animated designs, which is a wrong reason to not like them. Totally wrong reason. The real reason you should hate them for is if their final evolutions suck, which their final evolutions haven't been revealed yet, Neither have the legendaries of the season, hence why we don't have official box art. Because the box art most likely has the legendary Pokemon on them, so we don't know what the box is going to look like yet, that makes sense. People keep asking me which starter I'm going to choose, but I never pick a starter until I see what their final evolution looks like. Last thing I want is like if I pick Sobble because he looks adorable and clueless, and because he's essentially the new surprised Pikachu meme, and then he evolves into something like, I don't know, Primarina? I want nothing to do with that. That's just me personally. You might like Primarina, that's totally your prerogative, go for it. Score Bunny seems one of the most fun and agile. It's, good. it's a fire type, and usually whenever they have a thinner Pokemon, that means that it's going to be a faster Pokemon, as opposed to the bulkier ones, which tend to be slower. Brookie looks a little bit bulkier. He's a grass monkey, with a giant beak on him. I mean, I'm, I know it's not a beak, I'm just gonna call it a beak. And then he also takes this twig out and he bangs rocks with it, which is a pretty neat thing. I immediately love him a hundred times more than Pan Sage. Pan Sage, the grass monkey that we already had. Hate this thing. I do not like this thing. It looks like it has a broccoli on his head. But Grookey is adorable and lovable. Look at those little feet. Look at those little feet. Oh, I think the only thing I'm not crazy about is the orange accents. Like, it just kind of throws it off a little bit, in my opinion at least. Now, say for example, these orange pieces, they weren't orange. Oh, I don't like it in yellow. Green looks weird. Okay, I now understand why they chose orange. What if we just brought it down so it was closer to what brown is? I definitely don't like dark brown, but like, if we're trying to make it similar to the ears. See, I like that Grookey. Now it's just brown and green. Granted, it might be the color scheme that it is because of its final evolution, which may involve something orange. We don't know. The orange may protrude to be a lot more relevant. It's also weird that these appear orange and these appear brown. That's fine. Let's talk about viability. Now through the generations, most people prefer fire types. And that's for actually a very few very good reasons. If we talk about Gen 1, Bulbasaur versus Charmander versus Squirtle. Bulbasaur is the far superior in terms of easeability through the game. That's because in red and blue you didn't have access to a good grass type early in the game until later iterations when yellow came out and then the remakes, etc. So not having a good grass type going into Brock and then Misty, having Bulbasaur on your team made your life a lot easier. Squirtle made Brock easier, but not Misty. And Charmander made it more difficult for both of them since you would have no Pokemon with any super effective moves going against either of them. Could you get Oddish before Misty? Even in Gen 1, you could get yourself an Oddish, which made it a little bit easier. So it was always seen that Charmander was the most difficult Pokemon to play through, and that's why it's seen as, like, the far superior starter, because it basically means you're choosing hard for the beginning of the game, and you're, you're prepared to grind a lot. Bulbasaur made it very easy, especially with Leech Seed. That was a fantastic move, especially in Gen 1. The problem with water types as the starter is that water types are some of the most plentiful Pokemon. There's currently 133 water type Pokemon, 
and it's the most common of the 18 types. More than flying, more than normal. Look at all these water Pokemon. Dang, son. So when it came to water types, you literally had a plethora to choose from. Granted, there are some exceptions if you plan ahead as far as the legendaries go, like if we're talking about Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, there's a ground slash ground fire type, and there's a water type, so the grass type, Skeptile, is probably the most viable. I think that's how you say his name, I'm not too sure. Now you'll probably notice that of all of the areas in Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, there's a lot of water. In fact, 7.8 too much water. However, if we look at our map of Scotland slash England here, by the way, this is the UK flipped upside down. Uh, it's pretty much confirmed at this point. You have very small streams throughout here. You have a few lakes here, one lake here, and then ocean on the outside. But it seems like you're going to be at large points that there's no access to fresh running water. It's not like you're going through the ocean. In fact, by this map, it looks like you're not really going to be doing any ocean traveling whatsoever. Maybe to get to this remote island if that's a thing, as well as this one, and then also this back here. No, that looks like it's still part of the continent and it's just connected slightly over there. I'm not too sure yet. That raises the question, are water Pokemon more needed? And then also, what about fire types? Are we getting new viable fire types? Is there gonna be a fire type early in the game? That way we don't need to hunt one down. In Sun and Moon, I think that was one of the first games that gave you a very early Growlithe. I think like right before going into your first trial against the Totem Raticate, you can get yourself a Growlithe, which that's a super early time to get one. The other problem with grass types is what they're actually effective against. If I have a grass type, I'm using that against rock Pokemon, ground Pokemon, water Pokemon, mostly. At the same time, I usually like to have an electric on my team, and the electric can handle the water, and then I usually have a water type on my team, and that handles the ground rock situation just fine. Therefore, making the grass type not too useful. Granted, the grass types are really great usually for using toxic, and mixing it with Leech Seed and getting a nice stally route going on. But other than that, I don't think I really need one on the team, especially when you want to dive into your team having like really cool weird stuff like dragons and fairies. Dragons and fairies and swords and shields, medieval times, Pokemon Returns. So as many, many people ask me, am I going Grookey Gang? Am I going Sobble Squad? Or am I going people who like Score Bunny? I'm not disclosing that information at this time only because we don't know what the final forms look like. We don't know what the types look like. We don't know what the area looks like. We don't know what gyms we're going to be up against in what specific order if we're gonna to need to resupplement the team. But I'm gonna do research on it. I'm gonna do research on those Pokemon that we're gonna encounter, how you're gonna be able to supplement the team. All I know is, as adorable as Grookey is, I'm probably not picking him if there's a cool electric type that I want on my team. I really liked Alolan Raichu. Getting psychic and electric, it was so weird, but so fun. So fun. Nintendo did a tweet poll of their favorite, of everyone's favorite starter. By the way, they retweeted that you could pre-order at Best Buy. Do not pre-order yet. Do not pre-order these games. Do not pre-order them at GameStop, at Best Buy, at Amazon, or anything yet, because there's probably gonna be a dope steel book. Granted, if you're only getting one copy, yeah, pre-order it, that's fine. But if you're holding out for the steel book, which I sure as heck am, don't pre-order yet. Pre-orders are a trap. Actually, if you're pre-ordering from Amazon to get the, uh, I think they still do 10% off, then that's fine, because you could always cancel it before the steel book is announced. And if you don't nab the steel book, then that's fine. You already have your pre-order set, so no harm, no foul. You could also cancel it at GameStop, and then you have to drive over there. It's a pain in the butt. Nintendo of America, who's going to be your starter on the new adventure? Big Chungus. I've only had Sobble for 10 minutes, but if anything happened to him, I would kill everyone in the room and then myself. Uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Boom, found it. Okay, it was official Pokemon Twitter page, and Nintendo retweeted it. Sobble with 38% score bunny, 1% less, and then Grookey is 25%. That's that's to be expected. So it seems like it's up against score bunny and Sobble, which makes a lot of sense for all the reasons that I mentioned, especially if you want to have electric type, you usually don't have a grass type. These things add up. So I'm gonna do more research about the area, about the types, and about space chicken. 
I'm probably looking the wrong way. About Space Chicken. I, I got too lazy to actually pull up the official thing, so I just pulled up my video, which I literally talked about trying to find Space Chicken. People are saying these are Meltan. I don't believe it. These look like little aliens. And look at that tail. You're telling me that tail is not from outer space? That is a tail from outer space. It is a space chicken. But guys, I'm gonna have a pole probably right there. Boop. Boop. Somewhere around there. And I want to know who your favorite starter is at this very preliminary point in time. Before knowing literally anything about them, it's like choosing the new iPhone based off of literally no one, no information other than that it's the new iPhone and there's different colors. So, yeah. Also, no one's ever going to hold you to this decision. Or, are you going to be a boss by both copies of the game and play through with all three starters? I want to know what starter you're going to choose. The competition is still going on for the Nintendo Switch giveaway. Link down below. We're giving away once we hit 700k subscribers. Thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. But if you're not a subscriber to the channel, you may consider joining and subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like down below. Until next time, Austin John out.